Uh, my name is Doug Hanks. I work here at Juniper, uh, Director of uh, Architecture. Um, we have some uh, books up front for you guys, by the way. Um, I, I did author, author uh, two of them, uh, one on the MX and one on our new Juniper or QFX series. So feel free to take those, or if you want an ebook edition, just email me. It's doug at juniper.net, and I'll send you a free uh, ebook as well. Um, so today, I'm going to uh, attempt to give you an overview of our data center strategy here at Juniper, uh, some of the problems that we're solving, and then go a bit deeper on one of the architectures that's called eVPN, uh, as well as couple that with VXLAN. And then I'm going to give you an overview of our switching portfolio and do a semi-deep dive on our new QFX 10,000, which we have right over here in this little portable rack. And um, I don't, I'll wheel it over here eventually, but you guys can feel free to uh, check it out and we'll kind of, kind of walk through that. So this is one of our latest uh, new switches over here. Um, <clears throat> so at a, at a very high level, um, as Bruno mentioned, uh, we, yes, we're a strong SP company, but we're a very strong enterprise company as well when we start taking a look at the data center. And I want to give you an idea of what our strategy is. Um, everything that we do with regards to these QFX switches, uh, it's completely open. So when you invest into a, a, a basically a QFX switch, you're going to have a lot of different options. We're not going to force you into a single uh, architecture or two architectures. It's going to be multiple architectures, which is an IP fabric, a Ethernet fabric, or building your own SDN architecture. Um, all of our protocols are completely open, BGP, OSPF, ISIS, uh, 802.1.br. Uh, we try to keep it completely open, and we open the entire box up from a development point of view, and you see as a, as a programmatic point of view, where you get full APIs, it's based on Linux, it's all the good stuff for DevOps. So very friendly to automation and programming this box. Um, in terms of uh, the, the enterprise side of things, they, they tend to like to keep it very simple, uh, push button, easy button, and we got full plug and play when it comes to discovery of our devices for our Ethernet fabrics. Or if you want to build a, uh, an IP fabric, you generally do that by hand, but we have automation tools to actually make that plug and play as well. You simply uh, power on the switch, you plug it in, and it deploys as an IP fabric. So a lot of automation tools. Um, also, very rich analytics. Uh, traditionally, you do that by polling the device every five minutes. Um, in this case, we actually push the data out in real time, and we get a frequency down to eight uh, milliseconds for microbursts, latency, jitter, things like that. So when it comes to programmability, um, again, we got full APIs. They're REST APIs. So if you want to use curl, wget to go program your device, you can do so. Um, again, I mentioned it's based on Linux, and all of our data is structured. Um, so no screen scraping. You have your choice of JSON or XML when basically interacting with these type of devices. Um, basically, it's so built into our uh, switch that even our CLI is kind of a fake CLI. It actually tricks you into thinking that um, it's a CLI because in the background, whatever you type in, it converts that back to structured data and into XML, into the backend daemons. So our entire switch is built upon structured data. So open, simple, programmable. Um, I mentioned there's common building blocks. I want to give you guys more details on that. Uh, we generally see four different type of architectures. Um, generally for your traditional IT, we can do the MC lag. So if you really need to have stretch L2 and L3 across a wide uh, space, we, we have that. If you want to interrupt with other devices or if you're more on the software as a service, web services type, we have our IP fabrics built on multi-protocol BGP. And an extension of that is that if IP fabric is not good enough where you actually want to have L2 in addition to your L3, we can actually encapsulate the L2 traffic within VXLAN and then do all of our MAC address learning with eVPN and we build that directly into the switch. Because traditionally, as you guys know, with you know, VMware NSX or Juniper Contrail, if you have an overlay network, you tend to do that in the hypervisor for your NCAP and your DCAP, and then your network is just a simple transport. But in the case of you want to move that functionality back into the network, so from the perspective of a server, it's just Ethernet in, Ethernet out, and the network takes care of the encapsulation for you, we offer that as well. So it works very nicely for bare metal servers or different types of hypervisors where you have 
tenant separation. So very good for cloud and, and hosting type scenarios. And our other uh, piece is for enterprise um, IT as a service. So if you want that easy button, an ethernet fabric, where it's a single point of management, but the control plane's completely distributed for resiliency, we have the ethernet fabric called Juno's Fusion uh, for a data center. So again, these are the four architectures that we have here with the QFX 10K and the 5K. And guys, you can feel free to ask questions, interrupt me. I know you had you some questions. Tell, yeah, <laughs> please. So uh, you mentioned the CLI being a fake CLI. Yeah. Obviously, the next thing to me would be if I build this CLI structure of a command, it's converting it to an API call. Can I extract that API call? Yes. Be able what, to, you know, <laughs> as I'm typing it, if I don't really know the API, right. it'll give me that string that I can program into. Right. So let's say if you, if you type show interface, you okay. can pipe that to dis display XML, and it gives you the exact structured data format of that command. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. That's all I had. No as, problem. As you're typing these things, you can actually watch it as the API call is going and, <coughs> and pipe that into your own script if you wanted to? Yeah. So you basically kind of get a peek of what the structured data looks like. So you can basically port that back to your uh, software program in Python or what have you. Uh, and if you do display, R display XML RPC, it'll then show you the RPC call mm. that's the equivalent of the command. Whereas display XML will give you XML output, the output from yeah. the command. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. So you get very both cool. sides of it, which is very cool. Yeah, thanks, man. But is it NetConf underneath still, or is it, or is it native rest to the device with this platform? I'm sorry, I missed the first part of your question. Was it NetConf underneath this, this CLI higher? Is this different versus what you have had in the past? Uh, NetConf is, uh, we do both. Um, so the daemon, it uses just um, sockets in the background to Unix, but exposing it outside of the box, we can do so through NetConf. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. Or the other alternative is um, just JSON over a regular TCP port. Yeah. So <coughs> both options. And what what flavor of Linux? I mean, not that it matters, but what flavor of Linux is it? It's based on a Wind River Yocto Linux. Okay. Yeah. So carrier class version. Okay. And yeah. I can manipulate it if I need to as well. Put your own packages on there, so on and so forth. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I did want to give you an idea of what problems that we are solving in the, in the data center space. So I would say these are our uh, top three priorities. Uh, the first one would be IT as a service, followed by hosting, and then software as a service. Obviously, we're not limited to this, but our focus are on these three. And you kind of see you know, what our goals in each of these uh, use cases are. So your, your, your typical IT as a service is all about delivering VMs anywhere in the network, L2, L3, multicast, what have you. It doesn't matter where you put it, and obviously you want full integration with your cloud management, VMware, analytics, monitoring, so on and so forth. So we're, we're, we're focused on that. Um, the hosting problems are a bit interesting because it deals mainly around high scale, both in terms of logical scale for the RIB, the FIB, tenant separation, as well as the physical scale, kind of going out to uh, hosting hundreds of thousands of servers. So solving that challenge is, is a bit interesting compared to IT as a service. And then finally, with software as a service, it's kind of a, a Venn diagram. If you map the hosting on top of IT as a service, well, you, you need some high scale, but you also need a lot of programmability. So we kind of see a, an overlap in software as a service. So basically, we start with the IP fabric, and we basically put programming and APIs on top of that, because these guys are generally going to do it themselves in-house, and they want to be able to program the box to do anything that they need to do. So I'll give you a little bit of a detail on IT as a service. Um, so I've kind of built a stack, an architecture stack here, kind of show you the, the initial components. Um, so it kind of starts at the bottom. So we have all our different in-hosts, whether it's server, storage, and we really support any kind of speed from one gig to 50 gig. And basically, as you go up the stack, what we're saying here, this is where the actual networking equipment is. And I mentioned Juno's Fusion, which is our Ethernet fabric. Um, so this is a, based on 802.1br, and we use JSON for the, uh, the programming of that. And uh, Damon has a session, I believe, I think it's after me, or the next one after me. He's got, we're, going, we're going to give you more details about Fusion. So while I won't go too much into that now. 
Um, and then above that, we have all of our element management. So we basically have a product called a network director that comes along with the switch. And if you want to be able to program it, monitor it, get uh, data from it, we can do so through a, uh, a graphical uh, interface. And uh, on top of that, you have your choice of overlay networking, whether it's Juniper Contrail, which you'll see more of today, or integration with uh, VMware NSX. We offer both of those integration points in our platforms as well. Um, and basically on top of that, you have your cloud management, whether it's OpenStack, CloudStack, uh, vCloud Suite. We offer integration uh, with those components through our uh, element management here with Network Director. So I kind of drew some arrows here. So that's where those APIs are being configured and, and linked up together. Hyper-V. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hyper-V. Um, not so much. We don't get there. that quest that often. Yeah. Our focus Understood. is on VMware. <laughs> yeah. I had to throw it out there. Yeah. <laughs> That's the multi-hypervisor version of NSX, right? Uh, yes. And as you guys know, it's going through some change. So we're supporting all versions. As well as V. NSX as well v. as V. Okay. Yeah. As soon as they get OVSDB support, which I think was just announced recently. Today. Six two. Today. Today. Six yep. Two. Yep. yep. So, yes. <laughs> So the hosting is a little bit different. You have uh, generally two options how you approach this. Again, we have the insert or the servers and the storage, and you have your choice of uh, an IP fabric or a EVPN VX LAN fabric. And generally, the way that you make these uh, choices is what's on top. Do you want a controller model? Um, where it's you know, NSX or Contrail doing all the MAC address learning provisioning on your behalf, it tends to be uh, virtual in nature, obviously, based on a hypervisor. Or do you want to go to a controller list model where that intelligence is built right into the network itself? There's no centralized controller. It's distributed throughout the entire network. So it's more of an architectural decision. Um, this controllers are really more friendly towards uh, virtual workloads, and controllers is, uh, say, more friendly towards a mixed workload, which is bare metal plus virtual. And how you control those uh, could be a bit different as well. Obviously, we talked about the OpenStack cloud stack uh, with our overlay controllers. Uh, but when it goes to controller lists, we have some different options. So we've written some software internally at Juniper that we put on GitHub. It's called OpenCloss. Uh, it's kind of a, a cute name because we kind of named it after Charles Kloss, who invented the Kloss topology back in 1953. And it's open source, so hence the name Open Kloss. But basically, this is the uh, open source tool that we made to uh, automatically create an IP fabric. And once you create the IP fabric, we can basically do the day-to-day -day management of the IP fabric as well as the eVPN um, VXLAN uh, segment. So you want to create uh, new L2, L3 segments. Uh, if you want to add a new tenant space, a point-to-point -point connection, we can do so through a, uh, an API. It's all based on JSON. So again, controller versus controller lists uh, for hosting. So two options there. And to round this out, I want to give you guys a better, a better idea of what this looks like. So typically, when you're in the hosting business, you write um, a lot of the portals uh, yourself, unless you're going the entire VMware route, and then you use their tools. But if you're doing it in-house, or if you want to do bare metal server hosting, you have to write the tools yourself. So basically what happens, you request a new server, uh, it goes down to a internal management system that you, uh, the company itself writes. It finds the next server, IP addresses, things like that. So this is all company uh, logic. And then what happens is they can call our eVPN VXLAN API, and we'll configure this new tenant, new server. We'll bring up the port. We'll do route targets, route distinguishers. All that minute detail will be handled by this API. And the end result is that the server is going to be up and available on this VXLAN fabric network. So we try to abstract um, all of this data from you through this API. And obviously, we can get reports on the tenant and the network stats, how many servers the tenant has, how much throughput are you pushing through, things like that. Um, so this is where we see the, the Juniper value is here on the right side. And typically, on, on a hosting model, this is going to be owned by the, the company itself or the customer. Now, do you support, you may have said, do you support um AWS, Azure, well, obviously not Azure, but GC. in terms of uh, as being able to tie into the portal. Uh, 
like if I want to bl blend AWS workloads in with my um, this one, this one is a little bit different. Th this use case here is assuming it's a company that would sell bare metal services to other customers. Gotcha. So it, this wouldn't have direct integration with AWS, for example. More of a service provider type. A, uh, yeah, more of a yeah service or hosting company hosting itself. Company, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Software as a service. Um, so same thing, your host uh, here, it's really going to be an IP fabric for both uh, IPv4 and IPv6 dual stack. So we definitely support that. Um, I talked already about the open class provisioning tools. So obviously companies like Facebook, Google, Yahoo, they have their own software. They hire thousands of developers. They can do this themselves. The point is that we're not going to sell the, or you know give the software to them. The point is that other smaller software as a service companies um, they may not have the resources to build an IP fabric automatically themselves. So we'll take our knowledge as Juniper and we'll write this tool for you. We'll make it free, open source, put it on GitHub. And that way, you know, when you take a look at our switches to build an IP fabric, you get the full automation benefits as well as a software as a service company. Um, I, I mentioned uh, briefly the, the, the programmability aspects, but again, it, it's you know full REST APIs. You can run Python on this box, or you could use Python with libra uh, libraries to interact with NetConf or PyEZ. Um, obviously, Chef, Puppet, NetConf, Yang, so on and so forth. Oh, so Ansible. very, very program Ansible. It, you, yeah. I know Matt has worked with it quite a bit. Yeah. Is it At, just native using like the one of the Python libraries, or is there like native? Yeah, Ansible stuff coming that's going to be native like modules built into Ansible or is it still going to rely on external Python libraries? Yeah, I'm not sure on the Ansible with the built-in libraries. Damon, uh, you were doing a lot of work with Ansible. Do you know the answer to that question about uh, the libraries being built into Ansible or not? Yeah, we have not. I mean, natively, like if I download and install like Ansible, yeah, is they're that not part of core, that's, right? They're not. Of core, they're not. Right? They don't come with Ansible. They're not core modules. I think what he's asking. Just sure. install. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you.